taking a look at moles and molar mass. To calculate the molar mass of a compound, we first need to write the chemical formula, making sure that it, if it is ionic, it is balanced for charge. From the formula, determine the number of atoms of each element present. Multiply the molar mass, or atomic mass, of individual elements by the number of that element present, and add these all together. All molar masses should have two decimal places and the units grams per mole. So calculate the molar mass of the following compounds. Oxygen. The formula for oxygen, oxygen is an element. So we would just write O, except oxygen's diatomic. It always appears in twos. So I have two oxygen atoms. Therefore, I need to multiply two by the atomic mass or molar mass of oxygen, which is 16.00 grams per mole. Two times 16 is 32. Now, because of significant digit rules here, I have a whole number multiplied by a measured number. The whole number is two. The measured number is the atomic mass or molar mass of oxygen. Therefore, I get to keep the same number of decimal places as my original. Because almost every molar mass has two decimals, that's why we're always gonna write them with two. So rather than writing 32 grams per mole, I'm supposed to write 32.00 grams per mole. That should be our final answer for the molar mass of oxygen. Let's look at sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate is made of a sodium ion and a carbonate ion. I need two sodiums to balance for the charge of carbonate. So Na2CO3. Let's list out what we have. We have two sodiums, we have one carbon, and we have three oxygens. Therefore, we need to add up the molar masses of each of these multiplied by the number of each atom. So, two times the molar mass of sodium. Sodium is 22.99 grams per mole. I'm just gonna write this vertically. Then we have one times the molar mass of carbon, which is 12.01 grams per mole. And then I need to add that to three times the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16 grams per mole. Adding up all of those, I get a molar mass of 105.99 grams per mole. I don't round up, I keep two decimal places in my molar mass. One extra here. If I had calcium chlorate, Calcium is a two plus. Chlorate eight tells me it's a polyatomic is ClO3 minus. Careful when you're reading this. It's not CiO3 in your periodic table because it's very apparent in the name chlor that chlorine is present. That is C with a little L next to it, not C a capital I O3. Be very cautious. A lot of errors come from this one. Let's write its formula. Ca, and we need two chlorates to balance its charge. Listing out how many elements I have, sorry, atoms of each element, I have one calcium. I now have to multiply by the subscripts outside of our polyatomic. I have two chlorines and not three, not five, but six oxygens. Make sure you're multiplying. All right, let's add these up. Calcium is 40.08 grams per mole, and there's only one of them, plus two chlorines at 35.45 grams per mole, and six oxygens at 16 grams per mole. Make sure that you have considered, if there's a bracket around the subscript, that you multiply by the number of each element within. Adding this up, 
I get something around 206.98 grams per mole. That covers a bunch of different examples for this. To calculate moles for mass or vice versa. So a mole is just a way of counting. To say that we have a dozen eggs means that we have 12 eggs. It's a nice way of counting eggs at the grocery store. We could count that there are 16 dozen maybe within the egg um, storage basket itself. It's a lot easier to say 16 dozen than 16 times 12, 192 eggs. This is the same when we talk about elements. It's easier to say that there's one mole of something rather than saying there is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. That is how many atoms or molecules or ions or whatever we're trying to count there are within one mole. This is Avogadro's number. We won't use it very often, but it's just important to remember that mole is a way of counting. It's like talking about pairs or a dozen. It's just a bigger number because atoms and molecules and ions are so very small. So to calculate the number of moles or mass from moles, vice versa, of a substance, we first find the molar mass. And then we're going to use unit cancellation or the formula um, below. So make sure you have this formula written down. The formula is N is equal to little m over big M. Now, I do not ever want to see this triangle in my class. Do not use it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that makes me so happy. If you do know what I'm talking about, forget it. Do not use your triangle. You are going to use this formula. It is the same thing. It's mathematically correct and can be applied in any situation. Triangles cannot. It also doesn't describe math. Just a cheat sheet. So little m represents the mass. Mass has to be in grams. Big M represents the molar mass, which remember you can calculate from your periodic table. This unit is grams per mole. The reason that mass had to be in grams was because molar mass has the unit of grams present. N is moles. We ran out of little m's, big m's to use, I guess. Moles are measured in mole, just short form by missing the E. All right, so how many moles are present in 42.6 grams of magnesium chloride? To get started, sometimes I just like to write out what I have. 42.6 grams represents a mass. In this example, we're working with magnesium chloride. We need to write the formula of magnesium chloride because in the end, we're looking for moles. To calculate moles, I need to find the molar mass. So the molar mass of magnesium chloride would be calculated by one magnesium and two chlorines. I get 95.21 grams per mole. Again, that's the molar mass of magnesium chloride. With this information, we now are looking again for moles. We have the mass and we have the molar mass. So we're ready to use our formula to calculate our final answer. 42.6 grams divided by 95.21 grams per mole gives us... 0.447432 moles. Now I've written out lots of um, decimal places from my calculator. We need to consider significant digits here. In our original question, only one value was given. This is our measured quantity. We have three significant figures in this value. So in our final answer, because we've used multiplication or division, in our case, division, I should round my answer to three significant figures. So 
Three significant figures, remember zero does not count. Four, four, and seven do, because that's the cutoff. I need to decide if this rounds up, and it does not. So 0 0.4, oops, 4, 7 moles should be our final answer. Next question. How much ammonium phosphate should be measured when an experiment requires 0 0.0420 moles of this compound? Well, let's write out what we know. In this case, we were given moles. Moles was 0 0.0420 moles. We are looking for mass in terms of how much. When we're measuring things in the lab, we're really only able to measure a mass or a volume. And last but not least, we're probably going to need the molar mass of this compound, so let's write its formula. Ammonium phosphate oopsie, is NH4, 3PO4. We need to calculate this molar mass. There are three nitrogens. So three times 14.01 grams per mole plus 12 hydrogens plus one phosphorus, let's see, 30.97 and four oxygens. Now, a lot of you are going to ask, do I need to show this work all the time? No, I'm just showing my work so that we can get familiar with how to calculate molar mass. In the end, really all you need to do is write out the calculated molar mass. I get a molar mass of 149.12 grams per mole. All right, we're ready to use our formula again. N is equal to little m over big M. But in this case, we are now solving for little m. Therefore, we need to isolate for it. To get little m by itself, we need to do the opposite of the operations attached to it. Therefore, we need to multiply both sides by big M. Big M cancels here. M times N is then equal to little m. Because, again, we have moles and we have molar mass we can solve. So M is equal to 0 0.0420 moles times 149.12 grams per mole. Another question I commonly get is, do I have to show the units in my work here while I'm plugging into formulas? Absolutely, you must. Um, this helps me to understand what numbers you're using, especially if your numbers are not correct. I can at least try and follow your train of thought. If you put unitless numbers in, and I don't know um, what they are, it makes it really challenging and I'm less likely to spend any time trying to figure out what you are calculating. All right, calculated um, 6.26304. The answer here is in grams. Again, let's take a look at significant digits. In our original question, this is our only measured value. This measured value has three significant figures again. Remember, leading zeros do not count. The 4, 2, and 0 after do. Therefore, we need to round this answer to three significant digits. I'm going to cut it off at the 3 here. Do I need to round up again? No. 6.26 grams should be our final answer. There's some extra practice in your booklet if you would like to take a look at that.